Dr. Jeffries. Hotep, brother. Hotep. Why do you feel that many people have such a difficult time accepting the notion that ancient Egypt had a black origin? Well, because we've been socialized, we've been acculturated into the lie of white supremacy. I call it the big lie of white supremacy. And because of that, we've been programmed. And uh, our big role as African Senate scholars is to program us, reprogram us into the truth. For example, we learn in the Western education system that the ancient Greeks were the miracle people. They invented mathematics, philosophy, medicine, science, architecture. And clearly, that can't be true. Because the great Greek golden age was 300, 500 BC to 300 BC, a 200 year period. And peoples of color, Africans and Asians, had cultures and civilizations dating thousands of years before that, including the Native Americans, who had cultures of great cities, mathematics, pyramid building. And so something is quite wrong, and that wrong is the system of white supremacy that has bamboozled us all and programmed us against ourselves. So our great role and responsibility is to search for the truth. And when we search for it, we'll find that there's an African origin of humankind. Going back not a few thousand years, but going back millions of years. And as humankind evolved and developed into modern humanity, that might have been 200,000 years. And that drama is still in Africa or in the related lands of Asia. And then when we get to the modern humanity, 10,000 years ago, that drama is not in Europe. That drama is in Africa and Asia. And so once you have the chronology, you're e easily you can throw off the European misology. I, I just created a new word, misology. That the Europeans are the chosen people of the human creation, and that African peoples might not even be human. That's in the European culture, that African peoples might not be human, and that the Native American peoples might be subsidiary peoples. When in point of fact, the scientific historical fact is now exploding on the world, particularly these last hundred years, that African peoples are the foundation peoples of the universe. And uh, Africans are not only in Africa, but out of Africa into Asia. So when the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about the Asiatic black man, he's still talking about that which we consider the African-Asian foundation of humankind. So the big lie has been so accepted. You get degrees in the big lie. You get your PhDs in the big lie. You get your law degree in the big lie. And uh, certainly you get your BAs and your your uh, associate degrees in the big lie. So we have been reborn in this enormous truth. Those of us who have benefited from the explosion of information over the last hundred years and over the last 50 years, we've been able to institutionalize it now into institutions such as this, the Africana Institute here in, in Essex uh, our County uh, College. You have uh, a center dealing with the enormity of the African uh, experience. And so the big lie is so accepted because the European has taken the economics of the world, the politics of the world, and the culture of the world, and woven it into his narrative. And that means that he's even taken the consciousness of the Creator, the consciousness of God, and woven it around a white man, as opposed to looking at humanity. And so we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, but my approach is the truth crushed the earth, will rise again stronger than before. And that's what I have wrapped my life around, a, a mission to raise up this truth. And even though it may be attacked as they attacked me 20 years ago, the truth has emerged even stronger than before. 
All of the latest scientific information has established the African origin of humankind, the African evolution of society, the African cradle of civilization. So we reclaim the pyramids, we reclaim the temples, we reclaim basic learning and understanding and philosophical truths, we reclaim the study of the stars and the universe, we reclaim the continuity of life even after death, we reclaim agriculture and, and the great sciences, and so that's a part of our heritage. The Africans contributed high culture and civilization to the world. And not one or two little aspects of it, but the whole package of humans learning to live under a godly, divine reference in community, spiritually, is the African contribution. Now, it may develop in different aspects. The ancient Hebrews picked up an aspect of it, the ancient Jews, the early Christians, and later Islam has expanded on it. But the root of it, the understanding of the internal dimension of the human and the understanding of, understanding of the external dimension of the human, that's an African contribution. Once you know that, once you're, once you're seriously um, centered in that, then you can look at all these other things. Uh, when they talk about a pillar temple, usually you talk about the Parthenon in Greece, but that was built uh, 450 BC as a result of a war between the Persians and the Egyptians, and, uh, the Persians and the <coughs> Greeks, 490. So 450, Egypt has already gone through several golden ages, the Nile Valley, uh, Asia, all the river valley civilizations, Tigris, Euphrates, the Indus River Valley in India, Yellow River in China, the lakes and rivers of Central and South America have already gone through great ages before the European has a single one. And certainly the Greeks benefited from the other traditions. They did not create them. The creation comes out of the African uh, and the Asian mind. Well, uh, Dr. Jeffries, we thank you for joining us. Uh, we wish you much success. Hope